Hello there, fellow wanderers of the field. Starless Plains here, and welcome back to another episode of The Letter. We finally got more in depth about Hannah's problems and all that regarding her husband, so called husband, Luke, and. And her, and her dad's whether he still loves her or not, and her, um, but wondering if Luke is only just marrying her because of the wealth, or probably trying to make sure his family doesn't go broke and all that, but yeah, I do kind of feel sorry for Hannah and uh, what she's been through, but right now, let's get, let's get back to uh, her perspective right now. Let's see how things go on from there. The photo shoot went by a breeze, and somewhere along the way, we talked and laughed. I find myself getting a bit too close without realizing. Oh yeah, I forgot. Relationship. Hold on. Yep. Still the same. Alright. Let's see. Alright. He'll give me the strange look until I back off, and he'll go back to asking questions after I agree to do his little interview. And it's just... odd. Well, no. Me being friendly isn't that odd. That is how I am. Zack. Zachary is the one that's being odd. Why? Anyone else would absolutely welcome the extra attention I give them. He, on the other hand, looks almost flustered about it. He should be used he should be used to different personalities by now, having to deal with various people when he works. And if not, he needs to start. Perhaps nobody has shown him attention of this kind, and he's a big boy. He should be able to handle me. All it was, all it is, is a friendly touch here, a pretty smile there, and a gentle swing of the hips as I move around. Zachary grew and grew more red every time he noticed. Am I being mean as I find enjoyment in seeing him unravel? Perhaps. This went on during the interview and beyond that. There's nothing wrong with that, wrong with what we're doing, right? Zachary and I are just having a playful, friendly chat while enjoying the outside view. At least, that's how I see it. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm really getting distracted. Could you maybe stop doing that? Stop? I'm sure if I want to, though. Well, he is over here for the interview and all that, and I don't think it would be right, so I guess I'll stop. I'll stop if it makes you uncomfortable, sweetie. Sorry. No, I should be the one apologizing. Why, you're a shy one, aren't you, big guy? Uh, it's not that, but... Oh... He gestures to the ring on my finger, and lets the fact of the matter hang heavily between us. Oh, that's only, uh, um, Hannah's ring. Zachary wants to be respectful, respectful of, uh, Hannah's marriage with Zach. Being told, implicitly, that I am too forward is not a common occurrence. I think I'm more stunned at the fact that he pointed it out, rather than, well, being rejected. Not that anything is going to happen between us in the first place. It was just going to be some some harmless flirting, right? So you've never had a girlfriend? No. No boyfriend either. <laughs> you know, just in case you were going to ask for that one. <laughs> and you haven't even had your first kiss? Not a one, ma'am. Wow. Do you want to have your first kiss today? Uh, I don't know if that's a good idea, Hannah. I can't help it. I really, really can't. And I'm going to apologize lots later. Surely, by the catty smile on his face, it is obvious that I'm pulling his leg. <laughs> the laugh I failed to contain certainly gives it away, if it's still if if it still isn't obvious. But still, he lights up with embarrassment, stammering, and sputtering objections. You're married, and, and this will be extremely unprofessional. I never said I would kiss you, <clears throat> silly. Oh, Johans! Oh, come on, Hannah, no, really? No, 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 don't call your butler, she's Hannah! That would be for the better. I don't think his husband would appreciate it if I made him kiss another man. Uh, uh, Johans is a... Well, then. 
Or you know. I do not think you can hear us from here either. But it is hard to think you're not too <coughs> Zachary. Why, whoever becomes your girlfriend will be so lucky to have you. You can cook and take wonderful photographs. Wonderful meals and wonderful memories. I could play guitar too. Oh, nice. You can? Oh my, wonderful serenades as well then. Perhaps I can find a young lady who deserves a fine, strapping young gentleman like yourself. Let's not get carried away. Yeah, I Besides, couldn't agree more. I gotta be going. <coughs> later, I got someplace else to be. A shame. I will be expecting you again soon, I hope. For a copy of my photographs, yes? Of course. I'll even deliver them personally. Just, you know, don't try to make me kiss your butler when I drop by. <laughs> As fate would have it, the very moment the words leave his mouth, Johan's come out of the house. Judging by the slight raise of his brows, he has heard only the tail, tail of the end of the sentence. There shall be no kissing of any butlers under this roof, Danke. But you are not under a roof, are you, Hansi? To my amusement, he takes a step back, safely, safely placed in him within the threshold of the foyer and under the roof of the house. And just as ever, he is quick to return with a sardonic reply. I am now. As I was saying, madam, it's about time for supper. Will I be needing to set an extra place at the table? Oh, what? No, <coughs> I was just leaving, actually. So, you have a good night, Hana. And you too, Hansy. Oh my god, really? <laughs> it was nice to meet you, Zach, Connie. You have a safe trip. He nods, and the grin on his face, as we say our goodbyes, is the sweetest that I have ever seen. I linger, looking out for him, with this relatively tiny bicycle, backpack safely secured in his basket by the front, and suitcase hooked to the back. I watch as we went down the path back to Anslem Village, until he is nothing more than a blip in the horizon. I cannot help the small smile on my face as I go inside for supper. Alright. Answering the dining hall causes me so much confusion. It is dark. For a moment, I thought the electric elect work is not up to par. But that clearly is not the case as every other room is brightened with artificial artificial light. Finding the light switch is monumental task, considering the size of my unfamiliarity with the room. To make matters worse, the darkness grants the room a different atmosphere, eerie and frightening. I definitely see where this is going, no doubt. It makes it takes longer than I thought to find the switch, something that will have to be rectified later on. My skin starts to prickle, and there's the distinct feeling of being watched. It unsettles me, and only spurs me on in my search. And when I do open the lights, there's a hiss. I'll turn the lights down, woman! Oh, oh come on, Luke. Really? There, at the end of the hall, is my beloved husband with his face in one hand and a glass in the other. Perhaps I'll, I can let it go if it's only one glass of wine. However, I can feel myself so livid after seeing the toxic green liquid gleam mockingly at me. Luke, what? Are you drinking absinthe? Ab absinthe? Really? You know what the doctor <clears throat> said. Absinthe, Luke. Are you actively trying to kill yourself? Because if you are, we can just hit you with a bloody car! Honeybee, buttercup, not too loud, please. Besides, it's Lelouch, not too strong. Just hair of the dog that bit me. Helps with the hangover, dearest. You drank? When? This morning, love. Don't be mad. <laughs> I just needed a few drinks, having to deal with those simpletons. And maybe I had one too much. You don't see me whinging about you leaving me to handle them on my own. Fuck you, Luke. I had to attend the photo shoot and interview with Luxury Living. You know that. <sighs> Let's not make this about me, Luke. This is about you and your <clears throat> drinking problem and... Oh, I don't know, Hana, darling. What if my drinking problem, as you like to call it, is linked to you? Ouch. If we think about it that way, this discussion is about you. That was pretty mean of you, leaving me alone to do all the work like that. What do you mean, work? 
You can't use the interview as an excuse either, honey. She was in an interview, you fucking asshole. I was informed the moment your little interview was done. So, what was it then, hmm? What were you doing? <sighs> What's it going to be? Should I tell the truth or tell the little lie? You know what? I'm gonna tell the truth to Zachary. He could fuck himself. I was talking with Zachary. The photographer for Luxury Living. And the reason to tell lies, it's not like I am guilty of anything. But as loose expression turns, he makes me feel like I'm actually am to blame for something. He has a way of making me laid bare with just a look. And that really struck me when we first met years ago. That giant negro. Hey, watch your tone, you asshole. You were having a secret meeting behind my back and it was with him? What are you implying? I'm implying <clears throat> nothing. Well, you should be implying something right now. I'm just worried. You know better than to trust those media types, Buttercup. He must have been really friendly to occupy your time like that. But all he's looking for is his next big headline. He's a photographer for an interior design magazine. Doesn't matter. You let one little thing slip, one wrong move, and it'll blow up in the telly in the morning. He'll go to his journalist friends to gossip and make a quick quid. His eyes were the first thing I noticed about him. They were like nature, the grass and the trees, wonderful and breathtaking. Now, as I look at him, they're nothing but the same shade of green as the bloody damned ring in his hand. He was a perfect gentleman, Luke. I can't say the same for you as of recent. Excuse me again? We're talking about you, Hana. No, I am pretty sure we were talking about you and your drinking problem, Luke, right? Hangover forgotten during the course of the little spat, the man jumps to his feet and seats. It looks like he is, he is barely stopping himself from throwing the nearest thing he could find. Oh, it is not <clears throat> a problem. I can stop whenever I want. Yeah, what you said, whenever you want. And obviously, that means uh, you'll never stop drinking, probably. And even if it was, I think you can very well stay out of it, as it only affects my own kidneys or liver or whatever the bloody hell that shite pollutes. Well, you're the one that got into this mess, and probably you're gonna die soon if this were to, uh, were to proceed. Whatever aftermath that occurs because of your little chit-chat with the Negro affects the both of us, however. Look, Luke, <clears throat> nothing will happen. You have to relax. It was just a friendly chat. Well, now I think I'm getting jealous. Or I would be if it weren't for this damn headache. Maybe you should drink more. Maybe. Supper spends his silence without nothing but the occasional sound of silverware. A grand feast has been served. Well, grander than usual anyway. Most likely due to Luke's complaint of stress. A platter of native oysters for starters, and a tranche of turbot, turbot with purple sprouting broccoli, lemon, capers, and archovy sauce for mains. I think that's how it's pronounced. Eh, I don't know. Ooh, looks good. To finish it all off, black tea and golden syrup sponge pudding with custard. That actually looks delicious. And when our appetites are appeased and the plates are cleared away, Luke stands, kisses me goodnight, and leaves me to stare at my half-empty cup. Only in the lull of night, I sit, in a house too big and too empty, foreign and unwelcoming. Even when it's warm tone and homely decor, it feels cold. <clears throat> there is no need for tears, however. I know I can get through this like every other obstacle I have faced before. This is a minor setback in what I hope will be a long and happy life. To remind myself that this is a place for Luke and for our future children fills me with renewed vigor. Besides, it looks like someone is having a cry already. I don't like that sound. <clears throat> the wailing is far away and muffled. Yet, at the same time, it shakes me to a very core as I clear- as I hear it. As if the suffering is just standing right beside me. Hearing it sends a chin, chill- sends down a chill- Sends a chill down my spine and makes my skin prickle with goosebumps. <clears throat> Who is that?
No. I bet Hannah's gonna look down at that cellar right there. Curiosity sinks in as I follow the sorrowful sound into the kitchen. And into the wine cellar hatch. <coughs> I'm curious and concerned, but there's no way I'm going down into a dark and human underground. I'm not as enthusiastic as Luke, who considers himself quite the connoisseur. However, I also cannot bring myself to go to bed with this racket going on. <coughs> if it is one of the household help, it will surely need some talking. After all, this wouldn't be the first time I've gone and found one of the mates sobbing their eyes out over one thing or another. As professional as our staff are, they are still human. More often than not, it was either Johans or who I calmed them down who'd help them figure out how to go on about things. Unfortunately, I am not in high spirits right now, so I'm not as wholly benevolent. So I will... Uh-oh. I definitely don't like what's in there. Call them out! I knocked three times. Waiting for my short sort of reply yields me no result, and I've already touched the floor hatch for too many times than what I've like than what I like. I take a deep breath before reaching out again to whoever is inside. I've learned from experience that people respond better to kindness than threats. Shouting angrily would not help in coaxing them out. You in the cellar, do you come out? I really don't like this. Really don't like this one bit. We don't want Luke waking up and finding this <clears throat> man, do we? That man would go ballistic thinking someone was trying to steal his precious wine. Still nothing. You can have a good cry. Just not in there, yes? Why don't you come out here and we can have a cuppa and you can tell me all about whatever it is you're bawling about. With how long I'm gonna stay here, however, I'm starting to think myself as a fool. I do not want to acknowledge the other feeling I have. Especially as the wailing took an eerie turn. The thought of being plain wood didn't sit too well with me, and I had to stop myself from getting too hot headed as I try one more time. Now you come out of there! That is an order from the lady of the house, do you hear me? Why I ought to I feel as a ham clamp down on my shoulder. Uh oh. The dread I've been feeling all this time makes itself known as I kneel, unmoving, not even daring to breathe. I can feel my heart pounding against my chest. But the touch is gone, as quickly as it had seized me. Oh, Johans. It is only Johans I see when I look back. Apologies, madam, for touching you like that. You were not responding to my voice, and you looked about ready to wake the whole mansion up. I was... Oh, I'm sorry. I was getting rather loud, wasn't I? But that crying woman in there, we must do something about her. He grows silent for a moment and just looks... concerned. At least, I like to interpret it as a concern, given how stoic our head butler usually is. Or rather... It must have been concern, as he takes off a glove and presses the back of his hand at my forehead before his worrisome inquiry. I beg your pardon, what crying woman? Are you feeling well, madam? In the cellar? Can't you hear her? Madam, Hannah, no one is down there. What? The cellar is locked. Only Luke and I have duplicates of the keys. Really? Nobody is down there. I stare at him in disbelief. So I guess it must have been that curse that Hannah has fallen into. But when I listen once more, I hear no crying. Tugging at the hatch for good measure proves its words to be true, too. The thing won't bunge unless I had a key, short of using power tools on it. Perhaps it is time for you to go to bed, madam. You are simply tired and hearing things, a perfectly normal human experience. But if you are still experiencing auditory hallucinations in the morning, you are free to consult with me. There's a cold feeling in the pit of my stomach as he helps me up to my feet. What he says makes sense. Well, I'm to question someone who used to be a doctor. 
The only ones used to be a good doc doctor? Hmm. I'm just tired. That's that's it. Long day of moving, the interview, dealing with Luke. That has all drained me of my proper sense. Yes, I, I suppose you're right. I just need some sleep, that's all. Of course I'm right. Go on, then. Gute Nacht. Good night, Johans. Good night, house. It's just fatigue. That's what I keep telling myself. Although I can't ignore the strange feeling in my gut. Well, before I move on, I might as well look at the relationships. I know Luke's relationship is going to be lower. Yep, yeah, it's lowered up a bit. Zachary's is up there. Hmm. I don't know what will be, what what will happen with both Isabella, Rebecca, and Ashton. I don't know if she'll be able to meet those three. Well, she had already met Isabella, but I don't know. All right. October twenty sixth. Anna met Zachary Steele, a freelance photographer from Luxury Living in an interior designing magazine. Zachary has tasked to interview Hannah and to take the pictures of the mansion and its new owners. What should have been a professional meeting ended up being friendly and perhaps too personal. During supper, Hannah found Lou drinking absent and this caused an argument. While Hannah was angered by her husband's drinking problem, Luke was suspicious of his wife's activities, having not seen her the whole afternoon despite finishing Luxury Living's interview only. Then... There was the crying woman. What that thing is on top of that silver thing? Eh, I don't know. Either there is something wrong with this house, there's something wrong with my head. Sleep will be elusive tonight. October 28th. Wait. Luke is already gone by the time I rise. There, is, there isn't a single hide or hair of him to be found. Try and trying to call him on his mobile is a bust, as it only goes straight to his voicemail. That's twice in a row he's gone on me. And for him to disappear today of all days, it's every bit upsetting because of what's to come. The morning is once again filled with the whirlwind of activity. Fortunately, I am much more refreshed as we, well, I took a break from my responsibilities. I haven't the faintest clue where Luke was yesterday. Today is going to be busy day. Although, unlike Wednesday, the master of the house isn't here right now. Ask him once again from his duties. Hopefully he'll be back in time for the party. This is our house, after all. A grand ha ha housewarming party for the wonderful Wright Mansion. Every person of importance from Luxborn is invited, and there will be a few guests flying in as well. Of course, there will be some people from the media, along with friends and acquaintances who are made no less important, regardless of their status in society. Ah, Marianne. Marianne and I discuss business and last minute touches to the house before finalizing everything. Not that there is much change from our original plans. Bar any huge additions to the property itself, the mansion is nearly 100% complete. You have certainly exceeded expectations, Marianne. Everything looks so marvelous, and in such a short time, too. Well, I can't take all of the credit. People have certainly been enthusiastic about the idea of working on the right mansion. There won't be any more problems unless Mr. Wright has any more objections about the second bedroom. Second bedroom? Luke and I had a small tiff about making the second bedroom into a child's playroom, which I insisted on completely practical. In the end, he had, an he had to acquiesce. I didn't give him any choice in the matter. I even bought this wonderful wooden crib from the antique store yesterday, including some toys. Just in case anyone brings their baby, of course. Besides, we have a little need for actual guest rooms. We hardly have guests who spent the night. If we absolutely have to, we often choose to foot the bill for their visit in one of their hotels instead. Always at Luke's own insistence. And, on the off chance that we actually let someone stay, the bedroom in the opposite wing is still up to the task. Oh no, no. We proceed with that room as planned. I already agreed to him having his greenhouse and his vineyard and his stables. He may as well let me have this one thing. No, I did not agree to him having a helipad. All right, 
right then. Well, do we have any other concerns? Anything we need to put on our agenda before the party commences? No, I don't think so. Not unless Luke has anything else to say. Is he around then? It'd be best if we can note down his request right away, considering the scope of his usual ones. Around? No. Where is he? Who knows where? I don't. No, he's not around. She didn't have to point out the obvious now, did she? After seven long years, I've already gotten used to him. I should be by now. Still not, apparently. But don't you have a party? I want nothing more than to complain. To whinge about how, how unfair this is. However, airing out one's dirty laundry is simple taboo amongst high society. To do so will make you a ripe target for the next dinner party chit-chat. Vultures. A lot of them, really. For most of them, at least. There are always good ones like Rochelle Lee. But put your trash in the wrong put your trust in the wrong person and you'll find yourself eagerly picked apart. Mm, yes. But Luke's just being a sweetie, you see. That friend he's visiting. He's having marital problems and he's just trying to cheer him up. Perhaps I am being too ra being a bit too rash, a bit too hot-headed in divulging details. But I thought myself clever with the plans to dress it up as gossip. Marianne's raised brow makes me unsure whether she is interested or not. Although, that does make things better if she's not interested, therefore has no hidden intent to utilize whatever I say to her. They've been married for a long time, and they've had a... How do they say it? A rough patch. His wife has a drinking problem and can be very neglectful. The poor thing really does his best to be a good husband. But it's never enough for her. Sometimes I think it's the years. Maybe it's been so long that they've lost that romantic spark. What do you think? You were asking for my personal opinion on the matter, ma'am? Do you want me to be honest, or...? Do I want her to be honest? Be honest with me? I don't know. It's rather to be honest. Be honest with me, Marianne. I don't need Real someone talk. to sugarcoat it. I'm not some fragile thing that I'm just going to break down at the slightest thing. She hesitates, taking a sip of her coffee while I stare into my own cup of tea. The silence stretches on, and I also believe that she will never answer my question. I suppose that I shouldn't blame her, putting her on a tight spot like this. Her hesitation is understandable, though I loathe to admit she simply wants this whole thing to stay professional. But then, she speaks. If I'm going to be completely honest, I need to ask. This is about you and Mr. Wright, isn't it? It's my turn to hesitate now. I really didn't expect much of a straightforward question. And to get to the heart of the matter? I suppose I'm not as clever as I'd like to think. Or is it really bad that an outsider can see our little martial troubles? Surely we aren't, the, we aren't that obvious, are we? We put up the act of a perfect couple for years, although it hadn't been, it hadn't always been an act. Marianne is just more keen than the average person, of course. It is a necessity to her career, and she's been working so closely with us. Yes, that's it. Suppose it is. What would you tell me? Then I tell you, it's none of my business. I tell you that I don't want to meddle. But. If the troubled husband with the neglectful wife asked me for my honest opinion, I'd say that he shouldn't base his happiness and his self-worth on someone else. Someone who won't even give him the time of the day. Maybe he should try being independent for a while. See what it's like when he isn't trying to please someone else and doing things for himself. Everyone's supposed to be their own man or woman, right? A bit of breathing room never hurt anyone. That's just my two pence worth, of course. So you're saying we... they should divorce? Nothing as drastic as that. If they're afraid that it might lead to just that, then maybe that is what's meant to happen in the first place. We shouldn't let our fear control our lives. It's 
true. But it's just a short hiatus is all. Or, you know, couples therapy? Look, I'm really not the best person to ask about relationships. So grain of salt and all that. She trails off, haven't said her piece, and leaves nothing but the smell of coffee and Earl Grey between us. There's a calm, despite the nature of what has just been discussed. To say that her words makes me start to think is an understatement. To say that I'm not considering her advice is a lie. And to say that this might just be the calm before the storm is a possibility. Others have, have had shorter marriages, yes, but plenty have celebrated long and happy ones as well. My parents celebrated their choral anniversary before they passed away. But seven years? Seven years is a whole lot in the grand scheme of things. It isn't a whole lot of time to see what and where our relationship can bring us. And at the same time, seven years. Well, it hasn't been entirely made up of unhappy years, has it? It won't last forever. It's not supposed to, anyway. I just dread the thought that it might last for a very long time. I dread the thought that these small spats, these little disagreements, will turn into all-out resentment. The idea that we will grow to hate each other with every fiber of our being scares of our being scares me. I can't even pinpoint the exact moment when our blissful union turns sour. When did you start to seek another woman, lacking my ulterior motives? When did we start to cooperate only to suit our materialistic greed and attention seeking ways? Money and success. Fame and glamour. Are those the only reasons we still stay together? <clears throat> There's a cough before Marianne clears her throat. I must have been quiet for so long. I have to apologize when she stands up. We both end up on our feet, unsure how to process proceed. Some sort of odd, awkward shuffle occurs as we decide whether to sit back down or not. I really should handle what's left of the work. You won't be attending the party? Oh, you really must, Marianne. <laughs> I'll try to stay in chat. Maybe grab a few bites and a drink, but I can't be around for the entirety of the event. My apologies. Busy, busy, busy. You must stay a while. I'd love for you to meet some of my friends, and they're ever so excited to meet you. You need to say hello to the Lees, at least. If it wasn't for them, I'd never even heard of you. We'll see. So, if Foy can be excused? <laughs> Certainly. You'll have to excuse me as well. I must attend to the party before any early birds arrive. Because, believe me, they will throw a fuss if things aren't ready, even when they're not supposed to be here until an hour later. Alright, let's check the relationships. Oh, I guess Marianne is up there a little bit up more. Nice. Alright, the scene outside the parlor is a great organized mess. Aside for our own household help, we hired the service of the TAMP agency, which provides staff for Wright Enterprise in the hospitality sector. Even our very skilled staff cannot undertake a party of this size on our own. Waiters, busboys, hostesses, and their staff captains move about in droves, carrying crockery, crockery excuse me, and serveware good for several dozen people and then some. Chefs and bartenders tail before Johans, looking like sca looking like scared little children as he escorts them through the kitchen and into the wine cellar. To pursue the stocks, to select what can be served at the party and what can be used for cooking. Snails! We have a lot to do and I believe we did not hire snails. Snails are for the dishes. A string quartet ready up to play for the evening, turn in their instruments as they filled the air with idle chatter. Floor decor with thousands filled vases, or vases, however you pronounce, wreaths and baskets, while pillows are sca scattered along the driveway up front. Ooh, that's pretty. An ice sculpture of a reindeer is brought carefully by a pair. It is followed by a simple cake, just five tier with chiffon one with white chocolate mousse, fresh berries, and a light douse of edible gold leaf. Ooh, that sounds delicious. But despite the fact that I told Marianne how long it will tend to all of this, I find myself unable to focus or care for any of it. I still have our discussion running in my mind, and looking at all this, I only see look everywhere. 
These are all the grand things that Luke wanted to have for the party. I had wanted a small, elegant, and simple gathering, with only a select few invited, namely the people who I actually trust to enter my helm. I did not want any bloody politicians or paparazzi in here, no matter how used I am to catering them. At least be here for your party. Damn it, Luke. The entire thing screamed Luke Wright. And I can't help but, but add another question to my growing list of queries. When did I lose myself? It's always about him nowadays, isn't it? What about Hannah Wright? What about Hannah Evans? I used to be my own woman who made her own name, her own career, and her own decisions. Sure, I was already the so social butterfly that I still am today. But it wasn't all empty, shallow gossip and sinning pretty. I was also lauded for my knowledge and talents. Finance manager wasn't just ha handled to me, just because my father owned the company. I had insisted that I started at the bottom, so I worked my way to the top and proved myself. And I did. I worked numbers, managed budgets, monies and accounts, analyzing the competition and market trends. There was the circulation of financial risk, cost reduction opportunities, auditor li li liaison, I think that's how it's pronounced, and public relations, supervising of staff and, well, I generally had a huge slew of responsibilities. Admittedly, I was already quite the attention seeker even back then, having dedicated most of my youth craving for my parents' approval. Failing that, I turned to others. Look for praise for anyone who would give in. However, fleeing it, fleeing it all was. And Luke, oh Luke, the way he looked at me, the way he watched me and look a gen and took a genuine interest. He had me disgustingly upset since day one, hasn't he? He saw he saw me for me, Hannah Evans, with both my faults and my achievements. The man didn't treat me like. Some damsel in distress, or some prize to be won. I remember the nights before we were married, you, we, where we talked about everything and anything. From big things like business, society, and philosophy, to little things just what we had for breakfast or whether we liked cats or dogs more. We both prefer dogs. Nowadays, it's just Luke, Luke Wright's wife. It's mostly my fault, isn't it? They told me that hundreds prefer wives who are docile and subordinate. A woman who's always be there for him, yet would never out outshine him with all aspects except beauty. A wife needs to be home, attended to his needs, to have children, and to take care of them in his absence. Well, Hannah, that's definitely not the case, I mean. Nowadays, in a new generation, just things are really different, but mostly marriage is about teamwork between a husband and wife. I mean, a woman doesn't need there to look pretty and all that, or to be seen and not heard, as what probably some people would say. But a husband and wife would have to be able to be as a team, to handle their own weight, to... To do their part in this marriage, like, one can do half of it, the other could do the other, instead of just one doing the whole work with the other, just sitting on his ass on the throne, and just thinking that he's either the king, or preferably a queen in the house. Marriage is about being a team, and to pick up, um, to have each other's backs, and to pick their own weight, no matter how difficult this situation is. They said I have no business working anymore, after I was married blame society. But I listened. Before I could fall further into the introspective pit of self-loathing, someone calls for my attention. The guests have arrived, <coughs> ma'am. And Luke? Running a bit late, I'm afraid. <sighs> Running a bit late, my ass. <sighs> late for his own party. That man, I swear. He's probably looking to make a dramatic entrance, knowing him. Probably. Open the doors, then. We mustn't hurry. Alright. Cars line up on the driveway. Pepper 
the front of the mansion with vehicles of every kind. Grand tours, supercars, even the hot high-end muscle car or two, convertibles, grand saloons, and other luxury cars can be seen, being parked by valets. A handful of cab drive off. handful of cabs drove off, possibly those who thought it'd be it's too troublesome to bring their own cars. There are at least two different media vans as well. They're all here for what may be considered the biggest event of the year for Luxborn. So far. Who knows what we'll plan for the winter holidays. Welcome! Welcome, everyone! Please, make yourselves at home! Some of the guests idle. Enjoying the warm, if it's not strange, sunshine we were experiencing before gloomy skies inevitably returned. They greet acquaintances and friends with warm smiles, others less so. From where I stand, I can see the hierarchy of power. The ties that bind these individuals here, whether through convenience or necessity. However, there are also few who are not here to further cement their current place in high society. Such as the young man with the oriental air, ignorant of the looks he receives from women and men alike. Be careful with Shirley, alright? Rose, or the rose-haired woman talking on the phone, while she looks unsure why she's here exactly. Yes, yes, I'm <clears throat> party already, Mom. Yes, I'll say hi to her if I can. I see Zachary, the photographer, as well. He talks to a few of the other media crew with an air of familiarity. I was just here a few days ago, yeah. yeah and the inside is huge, but the staff are pretty helpful if you get lost. <laughs> hmm. I had invi invited Father Norman too. It's the least I could do after he blessed the mansion on my request, aside from my small donation to the church, of course. But the poor man had had taken ill and went through a nervous breakdown for some for some sort the other day. And then there are people like the chief inspector. People who I couldn't can never be too sure about. People who stand who stand on the board between being suspicious and being trustworthy. Thank you for the invite, Anna. <clears throat> Husband still missing, I see. I should be saying the same of your darling Rochelle Lee. The doctors again. Uh, she told me she'll just be in the gardens. Bet she's lying and that she's somewhere around mingling, gossiping with the other ladies. It's no offense, but that seems to be all you ladies do at these parties. And aren't you gossiping right now? Yes, well, what about Luke? Should we file a missing person's report <laughs> now, or do you want to wait 24 hours? Oh, shut up. He's around. <clears throat> you know, I can tell if someone's bluffing. <laughs> Don't tell me, let me guess. He's finally drunken himself to death and not wanting a scandal. You've hidden his body. Oh, come on, Lee. Shut up with that. I was wanting to give this housewarming gift to him personally, too. It's a plate that holds a wine glass so he can stop killing himself with liquid lunches. Looks like it's too late for that. <sighs> Nothing like that. Besides, this is a lovely, polite conversation. I couldn't agree more. Oh, relax. I'm just trying to be cheeky to lighten the mood. It's not like I want Luke dead. Sure. The man doesn't serve dodgy plonk like the others when I visit, and he pays his respects well enough. I could use a glass of wine or three, actually. Rochelle's been in a horrid mood. Threw a stilettos at me the other day and almost took an eye out. Not sure if this is how it usually goes, but I blame the pregnancy. I wouldn't know, would I? Hmm. Still no plans for a baby. Well, I guess that's for the best. If it's this bad now, I can't even imagine how bad it'll be when that little baby bump becomes huge. Have I mentioned that I don't trust him, no matter how hard I try to do so? At least he brought a gift, I suppose. Why don't you just go inside and have some wine, Lee? Think I will, thanks. Greetings such as these carry on as the guests continue to trickle in. Whether we have short conversations or merely shake hands and a nod heads, made sure to attend the welcome and welcome each of them. 
As the first hour passes by, the rest of the stragglers and I adjourn to the ballroom. Any latecomers will have to attend of the porter instead. I have other duties to attend now. Huh. So pretty. I guess everybody's mingling right now uh, in the uh, the ballroom. Alright. Most big parties isn't always the same old song and dance, no matter how big or small it is. You make sure your guests are well fed, have good company, and have them generally enjoy themselves. So when my opening remarks are done, when the band was starting to play and the guests have started eating, I find myself wandering around aimlessly unless I am pulled aside. For a while, I stay with a small group and entertain them before excusing myself. And when they're not any anymore watching me, I end up watching them. When they don't listen, I do. A local banker is having trouble with his daughter. He wishes to marry her off, but she wants nothing more but to make music. Hey, why can't anyone at least just let her follow her dreams? One of our motel managers worry about the stolen belongings of one of his patrons. A failing in security which could be brought up to higher authority soon. Our mayor, well, his cat died. Then, there's this rose-haired woman once again. It is hard to not notice her with her distinctive locks. She also lacked the grace that the other ladies have, though that does not make her any less beautiful. Her stance and the air she exudes instead are strong, and they make her stand out despite her casual attire. Many men have already given her attention, though each invitation to dance has been turned down. I approach, intrigued, although it is not no great mystery that occupies her own attention, with the glance she keeps sending towards the boy with the oriental hair. She remains unaware, though, even as I stand beside her, pretending that I am not there for that I am there for a drink. You would catch his eye a lot better if you wore nicer clothes, don't you think? Didn't realize the housewarming was going to be this uh, fancy. I would have gone with a nice dress if I knew. Oh, you're fine, dearie. It's only really the you those who climb that come to these parties all dolled up. Quite the black-haired beauty, isn't he? The boy comes over, but I do nothing to speak any softer. He merely passes by, but it's a wonder he doesn't hear what I say. Who, Ash? You know, you really shouldn't have turned down his offers. If I wasn't married, I'd happily go dancing with those young men. But you said a name. Ash, that's the exquisite lad you've been looking at all this time. I don't know him, and I'm the one hosting this party. That must mean you know each other. Is he your boyfriend, then? Because that would explain those rejections. All, in all my life, I have never been, never seen a face red so fast. The shade of, of her hair did not help as well. This is the most pink I've seen in a person, really. What? No, that's ridiculous. He isn't my boyfriend. Such a violent reaction. A simple no would have sufficed. Nanny here would be happy to hear it. And I haven't been looking at him. That's right. You've been staring. Quite heatedly, in fact. Although I'm not sure if you look like you want to kiss him or kill him. It's more the latter, currently. Just don't go murdering him on my property. I don't want to walk into a room and suddenly find a body there. I waver as I feel the burning of someone's stares. It is chilling and, though I'm used to the enduring of the gaze of others, this one makes the hairs on the back of my neck stand up. The hell? My attention is pulled from the girl I see a woman staring. Dark haired and dirty, she looks more like a beather, beggar than a guest, and I have the have half the mind to call the security on her when her mouth breaks into a grin. All I hear is her laughing. Taunting. Her stare makes my blood run cold. She looks at me like I'm nothing but a pig to slaughter for her amusement. This makes my hands shake and nearly drop my drink. And then, in a blink, she's gone, and the buzz of the party returns. I'll keep that in mind, but are you alright? Yes, 
guess it's... Sorry. I just thought I saw something strange. It must be the trick of the light. Anyway, on a right, as you must already know. Rebecca Gales. Gales, Gales, Gales. The name is familiar. Like a fond memory. Oh, I unlocked an achievement for reunion. Reunion? I recall a kind lady, a perfect tutor who greeted me greeted, treated me like her own daughter when I was young. She even bring me food, but there was no need to do so. Usually stovies, which I honestly haven't been too keen about, though I ate them nonetheless because she brought them to brought them for me. Oh, the professor! And your little Becky! <sighs> My parents couldn't make it since they're in Scotland right now. And mom says hi, by the way. But yeah, that's me, little Becky. We met once before. Yes, oh, I remember you. You were the cutest little thing with glasses. Oh my god. And when we met, you were having boy troubles with this lab called something with an A. That be Ash. What was it again? Aaron, Alan, Adele, Albert, Alexander, Andrew? The more I list off names, the more red and the more quiet Becky come, gets. She starts to get a little bit miserable as her body language shows discomfort and stiffness. Perhaps I have triggered a hor horrid childhood memory. Surely, I hadn't been mean when she visited with her mother. I don't quite remember all of it. Ashton! Ash! That man is that boy! The same one. Oh, goodness me, after all these years! I can see why, though. He's quite dashing. Y you don't really need to announce it to everyone with an earshot, you know? Keep it down. I'm so sorry, but it really is cute. And a tad bit sad. Uh, so, uh, this is a nice party, Miss Wright. Please, Honor's fine. We're friends of a sort, aren't we? We must be friends, seeing as I know about your little infatuation, Becky. Don't you worry, dearie. You'll have your happy ending yet. I'm not too concerned about that, am I? Uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Oh? And what makes you think that? Doesn't everybody want their happy ending? Uh, the idea of happy endings sounds like they're just for fairy tales. And they are, sorta. I don't think you can just sit around, trapped in some tower, and hope for the best. If you love them, you have to fight for it, right? Exactly. You're not just going to sit there and hope that everything will just fix itself on its own. Like everything, you have to work at it. I have to agree, Becky. <laughs> but what or do Rebecca. I There's a grimace, although she starts to relax around my presence. How long has it been since we met a child at, as children? Certainly a long time. She was she was tiny back then, if I recall correctly. I'm sure the daughter of the two greatest professors I've ever known is smart enough to know what she's talking about. But have you told him how you feel? And it's been what? Twenty years? Seventeen, actually. But no, not yet. He can be a bit dense. I was hoping that maybe he'd notice on his own and... Well, that won't do. What if you two become husband and wife? He's not to be dense when he's sworn himself to another person. Why, you might just as well consider leaving before the day's even begun. If that happens, I'll have to give him a good ear bashing, won't I? <laughs> Whoever anyone ends up with... It's not going to be a perfect relationship anyway. It's going to be things you'll love and things you'll hate about the other person. We're just humans. Exactly. It's funny. Here I am, trying to give you advice when you did the very same thing back then. I remember you giving me a makeover when we were still kids. And you- Oh. I do remember that statement well. Did I just give her that yellow summer dress or the pink blouse and petticoat? She must have kept some of that what I said in mind. It feels ridiculous remembering all that years later, talking about boys and how they go crazy for pretty girls, as if some gospel every woman would adhere to. It was so easy to say such things then, 
with me not knowing any better. Though, looking at her now, she must have kept some of what I said in mind. Perhaps I did say something good at that time. I never heard to take it to the heart. But all that doesn't matter in the moment as I mull over what she just said in my head. What Becky told me is very different from what Marianne told me. There is no time to ponder over that, however, as a hush descends upon the once lively crowd. The music of strings and the chatter slowly to a grinding halt as the doors from the foyer opens. The last of the last comer, la latecomers would have arrived moments ago. And anyone else this late would simply be too embarrassed to show their face. So this can only be one person, or rather, one man. There's only one man who is audacious enough to arrive at his own party so late. Good evening, ladies and gents. Enjoying the party. I hope I'm not too late in welcoming you all to the right mansion. Unlike I, who, ra who, who was raised in the spotlight and simply grew used to his presence, he sought it out every chance he could, even when there's no spotlight that's shown. And I'll never put it against him when he smells like that. He did so quite brilliantly under the scrutiny when he channels his own showmanship. You can tell by the way people's eyes light up as he speaks. How they listen, enraptured, even if all he's doing is a simple greeting. A little wave of his hands here, a little smile there, and a bit of a swagger. I always tell him that, if he is not, if he is not to be a businessman, he'll do well as an entertainer. I love the sight of him, especially when he looks at me, and he beckons me over to humbly share his place. Not a single second is wasted as I excuse myself from Becky's sign and I make my way to Luke's. Welcome one and all to our humble abode. Tonight, if you have yet to find yourself in your roles, you are our ladies and lords of the court of your king and queen. If you would excuse my presumptuousness. <laughs> oh, fuck you, Luke. So, enjoy the feast that has been laid out for your senses as we only allowed the best to be served. Enjoy the rest of your night, everyone. There's a round of applause, cheers, and even some hoots. Guests approach us left and right to shake Luke's hand and greet him personally. Praises on their lips. It is because of this that I do not see her. I do not see her until she is dangerously close, with fury in her eyes, and she is already spitting venom. Johan restrains her, taking care not to unnecessarily harm the pregnant woman. But that doesn't but that does little to deter her rage. The man has no choice but to let her go, lest an unborn child is hurt. Although, it might be too late for that, as I seem an emptiness glass of wine in her hand. So much- how much has she imbibed in? Are you feeling ill, Rochelle? Perhaps you need to sit down and- No! Shut it, you monster! I ain't talking to you! I'm talking to this scumbag over here! You bloody bastard, standing there with your smarmy smile! She interrupts me, jabbing her finger in my direction before she rounds on Luke. Even a whisper and murmurs breaks out among guests. All I can focus on is this heat of the moment. Obviously intoxicated, judging by the smell of alcohol on her breath. Why? Why are you having alcohol when you're pregnant? That's not good! What will happen to the child? Blood of birth with the facts that you had to think about. Obviously you're caring about drinking! I'm not ticked off by- ticked off about this little display of hers. At least, not yet. But I am absolutely pissed by the fact that she endangered her own baby by drinking. There is a considerable amount of restraint and grace that I must exercise while I wait for her tantrum to subside. I keep a patient, if tight, smile on my face. Luke's expression, on the other hand, is indecipherable. Watch your tongue! You're on thin ice, Rochelle! Where's your husband? Who even invited you? What? I did. And I told you with great emphasis not to. Now we have a drunk, hormonal, pregnant woman causing a stir. What is even going on? I'm just about to ask the exact same thing. I don't know. But Rochelle, do calm down before you hurt yourself. I can't understand a word you're saying. Where is that husband of yours? Lee, collect your wife right now. Don't you fucking talk like I'm not here and you're not responsible, you ass. You told me that I should wait for you in the gardens! 
Oh. Excuse me. What is this nonsense you're going on about? Crazy talk. That's all it is. Just completely and utterly mad. Has anyone seen the chief inspector? I am pregnant with your little bastard. You promised me you'll take responsibility. Oh, fuck. I didn't see this coming. I really didn't see that coming. God damn it, Luke. I finally got you to talk to me after months of silence, and you do this to me. What? What? What do you mean you're pregnant with, Luke? Is this true? Lies and slander, woman! Security! Johans, take her out of here before she makes an even bigger fool of herself! No, no, you do not do this to me! I was so ready to leave my stupid oaf of a husband! I told you to leave that damn wife of yours! Look at her! Does she look like she wants a baby? Does she look like she could take care of a baby? It is now that Johans returns with security, along with the concerned look in Officer Lee. They surround her and move to escort the hysterical woman. Judging by his pale face, he has heard the whole thing, and I feel nothing but pity for the man. I'm so sorry for her behavior. She's been under a lot of stress and <clears throat> alcohol. Talking nonsense, that's all it is. You're not allowed to drink because of the baby, Shelley. What are you thinking? Nothing to see here, people. Move along. Is there really nothing here but the ramblings of a drunk? Yes, that's right. There's no way that what Rochelle says is the truth. What she says doesn't match up. I know Luke. If such a scandalous meeting are to be arranged, he won't do it in such an exposed place, especially not near his precious flowers. And he definitely didn't, won't promise responsibility over a child unless it can be helped. Besides, Luke will never... He will never go, as, go so far as to sleep with another woman, right? Okay, fine. Who am I kidding? If I'm going to be completely honest with myself, he might he might cheat. With a bit of temptation and a bit of alcohol, he just might. And doesn't that just make my blood boil? To even think of the slightest possibility of infidelity? Lee isn't too off, far off when he told me how Luke still acted like some young hotshot bachelor. It, it starts to make me think. I will go for a break. Maybe Marianne had a point. If I am frustrated, if I am unhappy, maybe a break is needed. Some time apart must, might just be what the doctor ordered. Time apart to clear our heads, to think of ourselves, or for myself to be exact. Because looking at this mess, for me, just brings me nothing but distress. I feel a bit nauseous, actually, now that I think about it. Looks too busy making a scene to notice, and a concern Becky pulls me to the side. She looks as disturbed as I am by the sudden turn of events. Probably not a big fan of drama. Definitely not used to it, at any rate. Not surprising, as her parents were lovely yet simple people. Uh, hey, I figured you could use the save. You looked like you weren't doing too hot back there. Do we need to call a doctor or something? Oh no, I'm... I'll just be needing some fresh air, that's all. Some help getting out of here would be much appreciated. Sure, that won't be a problem. I wanted to get away from this drama too anyway. Just... Hey, Zachary! Hey, Zach! The mention of his name, I can't help but seek him out in the crowd as he makes his way over. They know each other? Becca, this is a real me- uh, Oh, hey, Miss Wright. If I am to assign a random number to dictate the odds of having two of my acquaintances know each other, I'll say the odds are are one out of a thousand. And this is any other situation, I would have been suspicious. It isn't completely impossible to have two random strangers who I've met on separate occasions who know each other and what will be completely random happenstance. It's just that I've been faked before to try to dupe me because of who I am and who I am married to. But right now, coincidence or not, I'm just grateful for the help. 
As long as this doesn't turn out into a kidnapping anyway. Hello, Zachary. I told you to call me Hana. Did I not? Yeah, you did. So this is what you called me for. We gonna get Hana out of here? I can see that they're friends. Not terribly close ones, but friends nonetheless. <laughs> That'd be great. They make quick work for getting us through the crowd. The people part because of Zachary's broad build, even if they want to approach me. If that isn't enough, Becky's pointed glare keep them at bay. <sighs> well, I'm definitely gonna leave it over here. I'm just completely shocked at that. That can that actually be Luke's um child that Rochelle is bearing right now? And probably I'm guessing the reason why she's drinking too much alcohol is because she didn't even want his child in the first place, because Basically, he, basically, Luke has been trying to hide the fact from that, and try to deny it every aspect of it. And of course, probably Luke is, pro is lying about all that. But, yeah, overall, I'm just completely shocked about that. I don't think I could fathom that. But yeah, I think Hannah really does need a break from all this. Hell, if anything were to turn worse and she finds out that he's been causing a lot of infidelity right behind her back, I think it is time to actually move on. Now, let's check the relationships first. Yep. Luke is down there. Yeah, you don't need- you don't need Luke, Hannah. You don't need him in his life. Let's see. Let's see. Hannah and Marianne have seen discuss the mansion's finishing touches before the ho housewarming party on a whim. Hannah asks for Marianne's opinion about a certain couple having martial problems. It leaves the former with something to think about after the latter excused herself from the party. The right mansion officially opened its doors with a grand ho housewarming feast featuring Zach Steele, Ashton Frey, and Rebecca Gills were seen, atten were seen attending. However, this was supposed to be a day of merriment turned sour when Rochelle Lee, the chief expector's wife, accused... Luke Wright, a fathering her unborn baby. Ow. Anything else? Nope, I think that's it. Yep. I think that should do now for us, for this episode. I wonder what things will happen in the next one. Hope nothing worse will happen for Hannah. Alright, that's all for now. Thank you all for watching and hope to see you in the next episode. See you then!